grace, I stand before you with an attentive heart. Erase my sin. Alhamdulillahi wahta was salatu was salam. Ala man la nabiya ba'dahu wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. All praise is due to Allah alone and may peace and blessings be upon our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family and his companions. Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Lessons from the Quran. A very short surah today. A surah about which al-imam al-shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala said, if this was the only surah that Allah revealed, it would have been enough. If the only surah that Allah revealed was this one, it would have been enough. Do you know what the surah is? Do you know what the surah is that Imam Shafi'i said, if it was the only surah that was revealed, it would have been enough for the ummah? Surah Al-Asr. And again, we're going to read, inshallah, first of all, as is the custom in this series, after saying, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Wal Asr, Inna Al Insana Lafi Khusr, Illa Alladina Amanu Wa Amilu Salihat, Wa Tawasaw Bil Haqq, Wa Tawasaw Bil Sabr. By time, Allah Azza wa Jal swears by whatever He wants from His creation. As for the creation of Allah, they only swear by Allah. You and me, we don't say by time, or I swear by my mother's life, or I swear on my grandfather's grave, or any of these things, or I swear by the stars, or I swear by the sun. We don't say any of these things. We only swear by Allah. As for Allah Azza wa Jal, He swears by whatever of His creation He wishes. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything that Allah Azza wa Jal swears by is a huge thing, a major thing in His creation. Wal Asr, by time. Allah Azza wa Jal is the creator of time. He created time. Wal Asr, inna al insana lafi khusr. Mankind is in a state of constant and perpetual loss. Imagine an investment. Mankind is always in the red. You've lost. You've lost your dunya. You've lost your akhirah. This is the state of mankind. Anyone from mankind you see, they are in a state of loss. They've lost their dunya, they've lost their akhirah. Like Allah Azza wa Jal says, ذَٰلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ This is the true loss, the clear loss. Lost everything in the dunya and lost everything in the akhirah. Except for a group of people. May Allah Azza wa Jal make me and make all of you from them. Who are that group of people? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except those who believe. What do they believe? They believe in the six pillars of Iman. They believe in Allah and His angels and His books and His messengers and the last day. And they believe in Qadr, the good of it and the bad of it, as we find in the hadith of Jibreel. When Jibreel said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell me about Iman. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and tu'mina billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulih wal yawmil akhir. وَالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ Qadr, the good of it and the bad of it. To believe in Allah and His angels and His scripture and His messengers and to believe in the last day. To believe in Qadr, the good of it and the bad of it. They believe in what the Prophet ﷺ told them. They believe in the unseen. They believe in Allah. They believe in the world of the angels, of the jinn. They believe in everything the Prophet ﷺ said. They believe in his prophecies, what he told us about the future, what he told us about the day of judgment, what he told us about the grave, what he told us about the resurrection, what he told us about Jannah and hellfire. They believe in all of it. But this belief, brothers and sisters, is not a belief that rests in the heart and stays there. It begins in the heart 
and it manifests itself on the limbs. Your prayer is Iman. Your zakah is Iman. Your fasting of Ramadan is Iman. And your hajj is Iman and they increase your Iman. And they in themselves are Iman. Because Iman is I'tiqad, what you believe in your heart and what you say, Al-Qawl, that you say, what you say on your tongue, well, amal and what you do with your limbs. Belief, statement, and action. All of these are Iman. And for this reason, Allah Azza wa Jal says in the beginning of the second juz in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ Allah wasn't going to cause your Iman to be lost. What Iman is Allah Azza wa Jal talking about? The changing of the Qibla. So Allah Azza wa Jal called the Salah and the changing of the Qibla Iman. And there are many, many, many ayat and ahadith. The Prophet Sallallahu said that Iman is 70 something levels, the highest of which is to say La ilaha illallah, and the least of which is to remove something harmful from the road. Your actions are Iman, your statements are Iman, and your beliefs are Iman. Those people who say, My belief is in my heart, this is not the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe your belief is in your heart and on your tongue and on your limbs. It increases with obedience and it decreases with disobedience. This is your Iman. That's why you feel your Iman go up and down. You say, my Iman was high, my Iman was low. It's very sad that there are Muslims in this Ummah who believe that the Iman of the Prophet wasallam and my Iman and your Iman is all the same. How sad is that? Your Iman goes up and down. We are not the same. The Prophet Sallallahu Iman is not the same as Abu Bakr and Abu Bakr's Iman was not the same as Umar and Umar's Iman was not the same as Uthman and Uthman's Iman was not the same as Ali and Ali's Iman was not the same as those who came after him. Your Iman goes up and down. It is your belief in your heart and the statement on your tongue and the action of your limbs. الصالحات, and that's why Allah Azza wa Jal emphasizes good action. And Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't separate good action. Brothers and sisters, people understand, believe and do good deeds to mean that belief and good deeds are separate. In reply to this, I simply recite to them, مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًا لِلَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَجِبْرِيلَ وَمِيكَالِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَدُوٌ لِلْكَافِرِينَ Whoever is an enemy, to Allah and His angels and His messengers, and to Jibreel and Mikael. Do you believe that Jibreel is an angel? Do you believe that Mikael is an angel? Then why did Allah Azza wa Jal say the angels and then say Jibreel and Mikael? Because in Arabic it's beautiful. You're emphasizing all of the angels and emphasizing within the angels Jibreel and Mikael. And this is the example of Surah Al Asr. Iman and emphasizing within Iman, good deeds. And good deeds are the deeds that are in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and are done sincerely for Allah Azza wa Jal. Two conditions. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Whoever hopes to meet with his Lord, let him do good deeds, deeds in accordance with the Sunnah, deeds that are acceptable, and let him not make anyone in association or in partner with his Lord. Sincere intention and sunnah. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ إِمْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى Every single action will be according to intention and everyone will have the reward of what they intended. مَنْ أَحْتَثَ فِي أَمْرِنَا هَذَا مَا لَيْسَ مِنْ فَهُوَ رَدْ Whoever does something in this religion of ours that is not from it will have it rejected. Sunnah Niyyah, the right intention according to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ And they advise each other to the truth. They call each other to the truth. This tawasi, this mutual advice, it's not about me saying to you what I know and you just listening. It's about us exchanging. Tawasi means an exchange of advice. 
I offer you advice with what I know, you offer me advice with what you know. The Prophet said, Balligu anni walaw ayah. Report from me even if it's only an ayah. Even if the only thing you know is one ayah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Tell the people Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. But know your limits. Don't go beyond it. If the only thing you know is that, if they ask you what's the next ayah, don't say, um, uh, and then try to say it. If the only ayah you know is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, limit yourself there, but tell the people about it. Balligu anni walaw ayah. Tell the people, inform the people from me, spread my message, even if it's only one ayah. If it's only one ayah. This is a tawasi, this wa tawasaw bil haqq. But this advice has to be based upon the truth. Look at the advice of the Sahaba. Umar would write to Ben Abi Waqqas. Umar would write to the various companions in his time. They would write back with advice for Umar, even though they were less in status than Umar. Because it's all about the tawasi, about the exchange, and it's about the truth. Inshallah, when we come back, we're going to finish our discussion on Surah Al-Asr and try and apply that to some of the key principles of Islam. Inshallah Ta'ala, that's coming after the break. Al Aziz, the Almighty. Al Wadud, the All Loving. Al Tawab, the Acceptor of your return. Al Razak, the Provider. Al-Raqib, the All-Watchful. Walillahi al-Asma'u al-Husna, to Allah belongs the beautiful names. Fad'uhu biha, so call him upon them. To understand more of Allah's beautiful names, join me, your brother Majid Mahmoud, on my new series about understanding Allah's beautiful names on Peace TV. Don't miss the chance to comprehend the seamless explanation of Allah's beautiful names in Understanding Allah's Beautiful Names every Sunday at 8 p.m. and repeat telecast at 11.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Analyze your mistakes. Have you ever tried to overcome your anger? Realize your weakness. Do you find it difficult to control your tongue? Diagnose your moral sickness. Have you ever felt that your intentions are corrupt? Learn the steps essential to nourish our souls in purification of the soul. Next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this second half of the episode on Surah Al Asr. We talked about at Tawasi bil Haq wa Tawasa bil Haq, and now it comes to at Tawasi bil Sabr. Brothers and sisters, I don't think that any of you are unaware of the virtue of patience in Islam. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu sta'inu bil sabri wa salah, inna Allah ma'a sabirin. Or you who believe, Seek help from Allah through patience and prayer. And Allah is with those who are patient. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ 
ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون We're going to test you with something of fear and hunger and a loss of life or a loss of wealth or a loss of fruits or harvest and give glad tidings to the patient those who say when they are afflicted by a calamity indeed we are for Allah and to him we will return it is they who upon them are salawat the blessings, the peace, the safety, security, the help of Allah Azza wa Jal and it's they who are the guided if you want to be guided you want to have the blessings of Allah showered upon you be from the patient who say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon we are for Allah and to him we will return and this patience is not just about you yourself it's also about advising each other to be patient helping each other as brothers through difficulties and trials I just want to stop now for a moment and to go back to the beginning the scholars of Islam say that Islam is built upon four key things that there are four key underlying principles or four phases in implementing Islam and those four phases in implementing Islam are first of all al-ilm knowledge secondly al-amal al-amalu bih to act upon it thirdly al-da'watu ilayh to call other people to it and fourthly as-sabr the patience upon what afflicts you or what affects you when you do so so just for a second brothers and sisters have a think for a moment get knowledge act upon it call other people to it be patient and the evidence they gave for these four key principles was surah al-asr where did they get these four principles from in surah al-asr just take a minute take yourself 30 seconds or 60 seconds just to think about where these things are found in Surah Al-Asr. I'm sure all of you sitting there at home know Surah Al-Asr. You've heard me read it, you've heard me explain it now. Where is knowledge? First of all. Where is action? Where is da'wah? And where is patience? I think the hardest one to spot in the Surah is knowledge because otherwise it's actually very, very easy to spot all of the others. Where is knowledge? Let's deal with the others first and come back to knowledge and see if you can, in the time it takes me to go through those, whether you can have figured out where knowledge is. Action. Where is action? If you said action is, الصالحات, Because your iman, a part of it is your action. الصالحات, a part of your iman is your action. And therefore, Iman and Amal Salih, Iman and good deeds, both of these are your action. So where is the Da'wah? The Da'wah is in the words of Allah Azza wa Jal, because a Tawasi involves you calling people and advising people to the truth and advising each other to be patient. Of course, everyone knows where the patience is, what our soul is sabr, and they advise each other to patience. So where's the knowledge? Have you found it yet? You can't have iman. And you can't have amal salih, good deeds. And you can't have at tawasi bil haq. And you can't have at tawasi bil sabr. You can't have any of those without knowledge because Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ no, there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and seek forgiveness for your sins. So it's implied by the whole of the surah. All of this bit refers to knowledge. 
because none of it can exist without knowledge. All of it refers to knowledge and none of it can exist without knowledge. So there you go. Knowledge, the first step. Learn your religion. What do you have to learn? Learn the five pillars of Islam. Learn the six pillars of Iman. Learn whatever relates to your situation and your circumstance as a Muslim. If you're a father or a mother, learn how to treat your children. If you're a businessman, learn the halal and the haram of trade. If you are a teacher, learn the means of teaching in Islam. If you're about to get married, learn the rulings of marriage and how to treat your wife and the etiquettes of marriage and the things that come with it. If you're a child, learn how to treat your parents. If your parents are still alive, learn how to treat your parents. If they're dead, learn how to honor your parents after their death. SubhanAllah, you have so many things, but it starts with the five pillars of Islam, the six pillars of Iman, and whatever relates to your situation. This is obligatory. Anything else is a blessing upon a blessing upon a blessing. But knowledge, if you don't act upon it, is a punishment. So you need to act upon it. Everything you know, you need to put a little tick and ask yourself, am I acting upon what I know or not? May Allah Azza wa Jal make me and you from the people who act upon what they know. And then once you act upon what you know, you're going to call other people to Islam. Call other people to what you know. Call the people to the truth. Not to the falsehood, not to the worship of other than Allah, not to the innovations that fall outside of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but to Islam and to Allah azza wa jal and to the sunnah and to the haqq, to the truth. And then when you do that, brothers and sisters, you've learned the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best of Allah's creation. What happened to the Prophet ﷺ when he started to call the people to the truth? Did they open their arms and say, Ahlan wa sahlan ya Rasulullah, welcome, O Messenger of Allah, Amanna bik, we have believed in you. No, they did not. They did not accept him, they did not believe in him, except for that handful of people who were with him, those early Muslims. Khadija radiallahu anha, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an, those early Muslims. As for the rest, they didn't believe in the Prophet sallallahu Okay, they didn't believe in him. Did they let him go? Did they at least let him just, you know, lakum deenukum waliya deen. You have your religion, I have mine. La wallah. No, they did not. They tortured, they attacked, they laid siege. They fought, they did everything they could. What makes you think you're not going to get the same thing the Prophet ﷺ got? If you're waiting for the people when you tell them, believe in Allah and follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, that they're going to open their arms up to you and hug you and kiss you and say to you, thank you. Wallah, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Because it didn't happen to the Prophet ﷺ. Yes, you may get instances in your life, one or two times or 10 times or 20 times or a few times when it happens. But every time, no, you're going to need patience. And patience is of three types, brothers and sisters. Patience in obeying Allah. Worship your Lord until certainty, i.e. until death comes to you. رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فَاعْبُدْهُ وَاسْتَبِرْ لِعِبَادَتِهِ Lord of the heavens and the earth and what is between them. Worship him and be patient, be consistent in his worship. Do you know anything similar to him? Patience in avoiding bad deeds. Like the people had patience in doing good deeds. The people of Ibrahim. Wasbiru, be patient and help your gods. That's what they said. Be patient and help your gods. You need to be patient in avoiding the haram like they were patient in doing the haram. And patience upon the qadr and the qada of Allah. The decree that you can't change, that Allah Azza wa Jal decrees and He is the most merciful. He's more merciful to you than the mother is merciful to her small, small child. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us from those who learn, who put what we learn into practice, who call others to it and who remain patient. 
after what happens to us when we do that. And with that, I'll leave you until the next episode. In the care of Allah Azza wa Jal, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm-hmm.